Welcome back to another FM8 tutorial. We're still experiencing a couple of uh, audio oddities, if you will, in the studio, so uh, please bear with us <laughs> if there's any uh, weirdness in the delivery or cadence of the actual spoken tutorial here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at making instruments that you can use in many different ways. And we'll just kind of explain that idea as we go through uh, the process of this lesson. We're going to start out by looking at operator F. It's the main working oscillator in this uh, hatch here. Um, we're going to jump into the envelope and come right back into the router. Okay. Um, it's a pretty basic sound. It's a sine wave. We've got it key synced. Okay. Um, offset the pitch both in the ratio and the Hertz offset uh, windows as you can see now the sound itself is not that different right now from um, you know a blank default sine wave it's slightly different but the idea here is is that add we add more operators with offset pitch values um, sounds gonna be wider okay it's gonna be a much bigger um, slightly deeper experience um, for the listener um, as you can see here, we've got this uh, envelope set to tempo sync, okay, as well as key scaling. Key scaling is important. We'll explain that in a second. Uh, tempo sync allows you to look at your envelope just a little bit different, differently, rather. Um, you can see that the time signature um, has an effect on the way that you're interacting with your patches. Um, this is a 4-4 project. There's your four beats in your bar. What we want to do is have an audible addition to our sound on every main beat of the bar. Okay, And then at the half step of each beat, there's going to be a little pulse. Okay, It's going to add a lot of depth to this sound because now we're we're fooling with um, the audible amplitude of the sound. Okay. Add to that the width uh, that's going to be generated through the phasing um, and detuning that we're going to add. And it's going to make for a nice rich sound. So let's take a look at the envelopes really quick and we're going to pop right back to the FM matrix to finish up our routing. The reason why we want to set this up right now is that we only have one operator in play. It's easy to get this kind of envelope, although it looks a little complex at first. It's actually very simple. I probably left a couple of unnecessary breakpoints in there, but hey, it's one of the pitfalls of using a flexible envelope system, right? Um, go ahead and click the link feature here. And you're going to make sure that you're technically we're working in uh, operator F here. Uh, tempo sync, and we're going to leave key scaling on 35 rather than the default zero. Let me explain why. As you go up in pitch in your notes, it's going to react um, or follow the curves of the envelope um, at a much quicker clip. Um, the lower the note, the slower it goes through. Now, why would you want to do that? It, it creates a much more dynamic um, will multiple notes line up perfectly all the time rhythmically? Perhaps not. Uh, but depending upon what kind of instrument you're actually planning on building, uh, this can be a very, very neat feature to play with. Um, you're going to need to go through and set those up um, on their own. And you're just going to want to make sure that each one has the same exact settings. Tempo sync is on, key scaling is set to 35 going to make a nice sound. And really what we're worried about here is nice, nice even, consistent delivery of sound, um, which means this is actually a really good time to mention that when you're looking at your main expert ops window, all of your operators should be set to key sync. So go ahead and do that now. And we're going to slowly add the operators to this sound. Um, 
as I added them when creating the patch. So this is what your sound sounds like at this point. Okay, pretty simple. Um, all of that movement and change and sound is coming from the envelope. It's 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 a beautiful it's a beautiful um, result for very little effort in the program itself. So we're going to go ahead and activate uh, E. We do that by right clicking it. We're going to load a sawtooth into it. We're going to set the pitch down. Um, it's about an octave down. 0.5030. This is um, it's going to add a nice bass element to our sound, but this is not being routed directly to the output strip. Okay, uh, this is actually just set up to be a modulator of F. So now, if you listen to our sound, it's got a touch of grit to it. Um, it's definitely got more of a low end presence. Now again, as we add each one of these operators, it will change the sound, but there are no rules saying that you have to use them all. It's a great way to create multiple instruments within one patch. Okay, So let's go ahead and we're going to add operator D now. Okay, Now operator D is another one that's been set down about an octave. So this is a, a, a low end presence again, it's a sawtooth. Um, but this time it is going to be routed to the main output strip at about at about half of its maximum volume. Okay, sound is starting to get um, you know a little bit more complex. Okay, we're going to take a look at operator C here. Operator C has been upped uh, to a ratio of two, basically. It's been back down just a little bit. Again, we're going to add um, phasing through the, this detuning approach. Okay, so this is our sound now. Definitely getting more and more interesting as we progress. Um, we're going to add B. C, by the way, is routed into X as is D. Um, we're going to get to X and Z later, so let's just focus on the output strip here. Um, Turn on B. This one as well has been taken down about one octave. It's routed to the main output strip. This is what it does to our sound. It's using a 1 plus 2 waveform, which is a really nice way to add that, that little something that you need in the, in the, in, in the presence category for, for sounds like this. Just adds such a nice appeal. All right, uh, the last main operator um, that we're going to be adding is A. It's not routed to the output strip. It is just going to be used as a modulator, not a carrier. I'm going to go ahead and activate that. Ratio has been offset up three. Um, now, it's, that's basically increasing this a couple of octaves plus some. Okay, again, adding the phasing. It's kind of a nice sound so far. All right, um, got these two pan to the left a bit, these two pan to the right. It's making a nice wide sound. Um, next, what we're going to take a look at is the feedback on these four guys here. Um, this is adding a certain touch of um, uh, like distorted grit, but it's very subtle. It's just an edge to the sound, um, and it's nice in these higher octave ranges. When you're playing it in lower octave ranges, it definitely carries much more of a, a throaty sound. Um, and while we're in this lower octave, it's a good time to take a look at the curves of this envelope Remember the key scaling is turned on, and notice the difference in the rate at which the sound follows this curve. Okay, now what we're going to do is play it at a higher clip or a higher octave. 
be interesting. Very interesting. Um, it's probably a good time to go back and explain this right here. Uh, the sustain and release. Uh, you saw me go through and take it off of a couple. Um, these are how the sounds are triggered or behaved once they are triggered. Um, release is actually going to release or trigger the sound upon the release of a note rather than <coughs> uh, the initial strike of a note. The sustain is going to allow it to carry on through. So if we were to go in and actually turn on sustain on all of these, it will actually follow through the loop by just simply tapping. Very different approach. off again so it only plays for as long as we sustain the note. You get much better control. Um, one more thing you can play with, experiment with, set one of these uh, things to sustain. Let one of these sounds carry on in the background while the others play themselves out. All right so we're going to route um, all of the sounds that are routed to the output strip, we're also going to send into operator X. Now, what is operator X? It's a noise and saturation oscillator. Okay, uh, this is where you can introduce, um, you know, a touch of excitement to your sound. It's not exciting like woohoo, but exciting like using an exciter saturation. Um, it, it can result in some very interesting distortion overtones if used um, in more extreme ways. We're actually going to keep this pretty minimal here. Uh, and the noise is also going to be minimal. Um, and now this is following the same exact curves as the rest of the operators. So the noise that it's actually adding is simply going to add like a rhythmic edge to our sound because this is a white noise based all right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate that. You're not going to hear a difference yet because this is being routed into operator Z. So we're going to go ahead and look at operator Z. This is the filter unit of the FM matrix. Okay, so all of our audible sounds are going into a, or passing through some subtle white noise, basically. Uh, and then it's hitting this filter. Filter is pretty minimal as well. We're going to keep the cutoff a little bit low keep these resonance knobs low, especially on the second one. This one can be a little problematic at times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and we're going to bump up the amount that the envelope is affecting uh, the delivery of sound from our filter unit. And then this is going to be sent to the output strip. And <clears throat> uh, this is the sound so far. And at a higher range. Again. All right, so it's a really nice sound. Um, we're going to take a look at the master page or window. Uh, the number of voices has been increased to two, and then we've spread those two voices out through both the detune and the pan feature. Okay, so if you want to hear what it sounds like without that smaller. Okay, so it gives it a nice boost in presence and interest and character. Um, you can get more character uh, by sliders, um, the, these quality sliders here, add both some analog and some digital sound. It's a very nice touch. Go ahead and turn on your glide, also called portamento, um, and just a touch, because we're actually going to turn off the auto feature. So a lot of people ask what the auto feature is in training sessions with me, and I just explained to them uh, the easiest way possible to understand it is that if your notes are overlapping, they'll glide with this auto feature on. But they're not going to glide between notes that are not overlapping. So if you turn off this auto feature, you're actually going to be gliding or touch just, just a touch of glide between each note that's... Um, uh, carrying over 
to one another. So they don't actually have to be overlapping in your piano roll for that reason. All right. Um, so that's the master window. The last thing to take a look at here is the effects. Now you can add a few different effects to this and a, a very subtle effect to add would be a chorus delay with a sound like this because there's already so much going on with those envelopes. Okay, but a really nice touch. Okay, and this is going to be emphasizing the cuts that we have here to these envelopes that make it sound almost like a reverse effect. Um, we're going to go in and we're going to enhance that by actually adding a reverse effect, but there's going to be a catch to this. Okay, we're going to use the psych delay unit um, and we're going to turn on the reverse parameter here. Okay, but the thing that's actually going to make the echoes stand out is that we're going to detune them slightly. We're going to drop them by one whole octave. Okay, now there's not a whole lot of wet signal here coming from our two delay units. Okay, but listen to our sound now and listen for the echo coming from the delay psych delay. It's been detuned just a touch by a couple of cents up and then dropped the whole octave. Listen to this. It's nice. It's subtle and it's very interesting. It adds so much depth to this sound. So how can we use this sound in different ways? It's easy. You just turn off a couple of operators. So I just turned off the two modulators. This is a beautiful sound right now. And it's got a lot less grit and edge to it. Why? Because we took away the two modulators. Okay, the two modulators weren't going out. They were being fed back into themselves, so a little edgy already. Um, and then they're changing the waveform of these operators. It's a rather gorgeous sound, especially with that secondary layer, that, that dropped pitch from the psych delay. All right, let's take a look at how you might actually use this sound. All right, so I've entered in a little bit of MIDI data here. Now, this is not meant to be uh, something that is a beautiful melody or anything. This is more just so you can get an idea of very short, pluck type instances of the sound being used and it's slowly going to move into sustained notes. Okay, But in the second half of the sequence we're actually going to be adding long sustained whole bars of these lower notes. Now key tracking is is turned on in the envelopes, remember? Okay, So these notes are going to be playing through these curves at a much slower rate than these notes up here. Let's hear what the effect is. That's all delay. You can hear that beautiful depth coming through. Okay, so you could hear the, the, the pulses in these sounds actually got quicker as they were going up, even though there's a very small range um, between this note and this note. It's only one octave. Uh, the notes up here, though, are moving at a much faster clip. All right, so that's your sound. Just call this patch higher intelligence. You call it whatever you like. Make your own. Try swapping out some different waveforms. It's very easy to come up with your own version of the sound. All right. It's great for uh, popular music, electronic stuff. You can use it in both cinematic and gaming scoring. Um, highly flexible. And remember that if you don't want all these different uh, sounds influencing your patch, take them away. You can still end up with something incredibly beautiful. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Take care.